I'm Jimmy Kimmel. We are coming to you in prime time for another, perhaps the final showdown between the Heat of Miami and the Lakers of L.A. I have to admit, I love the Lakers. I live in Los Angeles, but it's been hard to focus on basketball with everything that's going on in the news. I mean, the president gets coronavirus right in the middle of the finals. The only thing I can compare this to is it reminds me of 1994 when O.J., jumped in the white Bronco while the Knicks and Rockets were in the NBA Finals. I mean, how crazy was that? That the Knicks were in the NBA Finals. It's, it's no, yeah, there's no drummer, I'm sorry. The, uh, big difference between that situation and this one is that OJ at least had the good sense to wear gloves. But I have a lot riding on this series, specifically a uh, ride on DJ Khaled's jet ski. DJ Khaled, who lives in Miami, he's a big Heat fan, and I made a bet. If the Lakers win, I get his jet ski, the famous one. He has to give it to me. And if the Heat win, he gets my classic Donkey Kong Jr. arcade game, which would be a real bummer for me, but my wife is hoping he wins, so. <laughs> The Lakers are looking to close it out tonight. Only one team has ever come back from down 3-1 in the NBA Finals. Sadly for the Heat, that team had LeBron James on it. They do not. LeBron has been great as usual, but the most valuable player for the Lakers might be the late, great Kobe Bryant. Kobe's memory has been a driving force and inspiration for the Lakers and this city all season long. And as a tribute tonight, the Lakers wore special, uh, are wearing special Black Mamba uniforms. It, just when you think... Just when I thought 2020 had completely drained my soul, this happens, and it makes me feel like I might have a, a, just a bit of emotion or two left in my body. LeBron James, once again, is favored to win MVP. That would be LeBron's fourth NBA Finals MVP award. It will also score him a much-needed fourth Dodge Durango, which is... Uh, <laughs> and I don't know if this is exciting or if it's a jinx, but LeBron is making his first-ever appearance on the Wheaties box, which is cool. This is a tradition that uh, putting an athlete on the cover of the box goes back to 1958. Do people still eat Wheaties or do they just exist so athletes can be on the box? <laughs> this, of course, is an honor for LeBron, but he's not the only one in the series who's part of the Breakfast Club. Miami Heat president Pat Riley has been on the Count Chocula box since <laughs> 1988, so a very long time. Because of the pandemic, all the playoff games were set in Orlando, inside what they called the bubble. This has been one of the most successful bubbles of all time, right up there with Michael Jackson's monkey. And it's, the bubble has been effective, but also mysterious. From a media standpoint, it's been a bit of a cone of silence. We don't know much about what went on in there, but now that the playoffs are almost done, we asked some of the players who were in it to share with us what they were up to in the bubble. So I ordered this vacuum cleaner online, and I married it. This is my new wife, Linda. Say hi, Linda. I punched Goofy. I don't regret it. You know what you did, Goofy. <laughs> Sometime I hugged the ice machine just to feel something. I drank so much wine that I became a wine snob. <laughs> Delicate. I ordered Doolittle on pay-per-view every night for a whole month. Man, that little duck is funny. I started a sex cult for myself. Well, you know what? You can't play ping pong forever. We have a great show for you tonight. Jamie Foxx is with us, and we'll be right back with an exciting new game called Truth or Shorts. So stick around. If you like that video, then put a ring on it. Click the subscribe button below. Oh, oh, oh.